So in this eternal evolution video, we're going to go through the three caves. I'm going to go through what champs I use, why I use them. And then also we're going to go into the gear and we'll actually probably start with the gear as well for the champs that I use. So this video was a community request from Shanique. And because I'm about to hand my account over, I'm just going to kind of summarize how I attack the dungeons uh, all in one video. So like and subscribe and we'll get into the heroes first. So for my sustain, Mazarani is my number one go-to because he can heal the entire group and he just has the hugest amount of um, HP um, regen that uh, he, out of any of my healers. So the equipment for him is damage reduction boots, then HP percentage, HP percentage. It is ideal if you can get abundance set on him, but I wouldn't be putting abundance set on him if it's dropping his HP too much. So he hasn't actually got the greatest gear. This is strictly a uh, PVP please. Um, it would be nice if that was a triple HP set, um, substat, uh, but crit damage reduction, good for PVP. Um, I just rolled this one up just now actually, so HP with damage reduction plus two. Um, that's a pretty average piece, but the best I had. Um, pretty average piece, but HP and damage reduction, not too bad. This is a really good piece. Um, you always, with the healers, you want more HP than you want damage reduction. And I only have damage reduction on Maserani because he's a frontline tank healer. If he was a rear-line hero or a mid-line healer, healer uh, I wouldn't be having worrying about damage reduction as much. And then just, yeah, pretty bad piece. The only good role on that is HP. So that's Maserani, my main healer. Uh, Leo, he's in pure attack. So some people are building with the HP, damage reduction, and attack, but I just went strictly attack and just did a showcase on how much damage he can do. So uh, yeah, this is how I like him. So attack, attack, and attack. Uh, as many attack substats as I can get, and all hero sets. Mazrani is exclusive 30 and Leo's exclusive 20. Uh, Leo's not in the list yet to get EX 30, although I would love it because he does a ton more damage with his ult, but I've just got other people that I'm prioritizing. Uh, Serena built out the exact same way as Masrani, no difference at all. Um, so you want to get about, oh, some people say, like, I'd like to be at 75% crit rate, um, and then as much crit damage as you can get on him with attack, attack, and crit rate or crit damage gloves, if you can do it. I've managed to get crit damage gloves on him. Uh, early game, you'll need to get crit rate on him because every time he does a crit rate hit, uh, he gets more crit damage. So you want to make sure he's critting more than he's not. Um, and that builds up to a certain amount. I think within 30 hits, he maxes out his crit damage bonus. Uh, Claws, we're not worried about. Bot Mark is a staple. You get him early on in the game and you carry him all the way through until the end. He's got an ability where every single crit rate he does drops the enemy's defense percentage um, up to about 30 six percent i think so he's got a massive amount of crit rate with um low crit damage because i can't get enough crit damage on him and i'm more worried about survivability with him rather than so his priority is crit rate followed by survivability um for me personally uh next up uh randall's not used in any of the dungeons boar's not used lee Ren's not used uh emma's a staple uh so I just added some extra gear onto her or some better gear. So gluttonous sets with a hero is by far the best set you can do or best set combo. You want attack, attack, attack. And you actually want, well, you don't want, but me personally, I like uh, EX attack or anything that's just like an insane role that will just help out somehow. So damage reduction isn't super important for her, but if she's the last person in the battlefield, and it's a one-on-one -on -one somehow, like say for uh, PVP, uh, damage reduction might make a difference. But yeah, we've got double EX attack and double EX attack. And on these top pieces, you're just looking for attack percentage rolls. So I just rolled this one up as well, attack plus two with EX plus one, and attack plus two. Um, Artist can be used. I'm not sure if I'm using him in any dungeons, but he's worth going over. Um, he's just in a makeshift set, but you pretty much just want him in pure HP with damage reduction boots. 
So yeah, this is a terrible build for him. So I won't go through it. But yeah, pretty much uh, vigorous sets all over HP percentage and damage reduction boots. And I think that's oh no, and Daniel. Uh, he's my MVP when it comes to damage. Even though Leo does more sometimes uh, with his crowd control, he can be the last person on the battlefield and just lock them out. So I was 50-50 whether Leo or Daniel should get the priority on attack gear. I just went for Daniel. But um, much of a much, just to be honest. You just want pure attack. And, uh, and then if you get some survivability stats after the attack, then good for them. And Daniel is one that I would actually highly recommend doing EX30 on. My M is EX30, and I wish it was Daniel. But um, yeah, EX is one thing that you can't take back. So I think that is everyone. Oh, Bailey as well is coming into my Taradome team. So yeah, about 75% crit rate, and then you just want to start building as much crit damage as possible. You want him in. You can't go damage reduction, but for me it was attack, attack, and then crit rate. But if I get him in crit damage gloves, that'd be even better. Uh, he will be one of the priorities. I could obviously activate his EX and put him all the way up to 20, but I'm going to do a whole spotlight on Bailey, um, adding activating his exclusive and then one by one going through each level um, and then adding talents at the end. So, uh, yeah, that is everyone. Res can jump in, but uh, Res makes a huge buff at EX30, so I'm not going to worry about showing him just yet. All right, so let's get into it. So DCK is you're obviously looking for single target damage. Once you go to DC 12, there's a little healing bug that you need to take care of, or if you do enough DPS, you don't need to worry about. Um, so this is the team that I run. Not this matters too much, but Daniel's up front for an extra 7.5% attack. Um, this guy's ability only triggers off Target, like heroes that attack uh, three times on one target and are in the middle of back row. So Daniel can't use it, uh, but these three can. So they're in the middle of back row. So we'll go through the damage and I will make sure that I have the damage count up so you can see it. So Leo, Leo's AI will actually target the bug. So he'll go over and sort that one out. But uh, you'll see Emma take off quite quickly. Taylor does actually hold up quite well on this, but Emma does break away. Uh, early on, you do need a healer. So normally you'll be using like a combo of Serena and Lee Ran early on, and then move into Masrani to replace uh, Lee Ran. And then you only need one healer. And then finally, when you do this much damage, you won't need a healer at all. So even uh, Daniel, though he's an AOE damager, he's still coming in second. But yeah, Emma just absolutely taking the battlefield away. Cool. All right, so that's how I run the Deesa Caves. Sinsara Marsh is actually exactly the same team, I think. Early on, you need to worry about the minions, but later on, the minions don't matter at all. It's a different setup here. The only reason setups like this is... Like, it'd be ideal to have Daniel up there because you'd be getting the 7.5% attack. But the way Emma and Botmark move around the frontline heroes stuffs it up and they don't attack. They don't both attack the main boss. So it means I'm either getting defense down or Emma's attacking. So this way, Emma and Botmark both attack in the middle creature. Um... Yep, the AI on this is a bit different because obviously Taylor was attacking one of the pods down here. But yeah, very close between Daniel and Emma because obviously there is a, an AOE element for Daniel. And now this is the hard one. This is where the team does mix up a bit. Um, so I do need a healer on this one. And uh, we're using displacement heroes to basically survive through this one. And Taylor's great because he can move into the circle to do some damage. But this one, I actually do fail every now and again, just if the RNG rolls that I lose Leo or Bailey or he attacks Taylor with his um, big hit, definitely stuffs me up. All 
Um, now that I have Nefang up to Immortal, it might actually be worth me um, swapping Daniel out for Nefang, but I haven't actually gone down that path just yet. Uh, Leo, actually, because he's now Immortal, this is the first time I battled Taradome with uh, an Immortal Leo. There could be a bit of a difference in uh, how quickly I can finish this now. And it should also increase the uh, survivability I have for this battle too. You see the damage that Bailey's doing. He's got no EX activated. He's got uh, no talents. And uh, he's still legendary plus four. So he will be a game changer in this once he's actually up to legendary. And then fully, fully decked out. This is where I have to wait to drop Taylor because uh, sometimes he'll actually drop a huge, his huge attack on Taylor. Yep, so Taylor's been that blast there. A minute one might be my record. Oh, two minutes. Yep. Cool. All right, so that's three dungeons. You've seen the heroes. I don't think there's anything else to really showcase with them. Um... I'll just go through the EXs again. So Masrani, I recommend being the first EX champ you get. Helps the survivability of your team in all aspects throughout the whole game. And uh, you can EX 30 him in week four of the game, uh, as long as you get enough red runes. Um, my next EX was... Actually, my only other EX might be Emma. Because you get about one EX champ per month. So that's a good way to gauge your EX is every single month you'll get one champion that you can put to plus 30. So uh, yeah, my second one's Emma and I have massive regrets on that. She's great, but I wish it was Daniel and possibly even Leo in the second month and then in the third month, Bailey. But uh, Rez is also viable in place of Bailey because Rez helps out all teams in every aspect, whereas Bailey's kind of getting outclassed a little bit at the moment. But... Uh, yeah, that's it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Like and subscribe. Cheers. Bye.